welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Um, right now I'm just applying adhesive to some pattern paper because um, I'm going to cover the entire front of a card um, with this pattern paper from Studio Calico. And uh, I'm going to show you the way that I do this because I always get things crooked or I adhere things the wrong way and I waste pattern paper and it drives me crazy. So this is what I've found. Um, if you're like me, this maybe this will help you. I put the I butt the uh, the card base up into the corner and then I take the pattern paper and butt that into the corner also. And that helps me keep it straight versus relying on my on my eye to keep it straight. So I hope that helps maybe some of you that are like me that can never get things on properly. Um, and then right now um, I've got partly cloudy a lawn fawn stamp set out and I'm going to use that big umbrella, which I really love. It's really fun. It reminds me of singing in the rain, which I love. Um, and I'm just getting out my acrylic block and getting ready to stamp. And I'm going to get out some Colorbox pigment ink. Um, it's a sunflower color. And this ink pad is really old. I think it's three years old or something. So you're going to see me stamping it kind of furiously because it's really dry. But the color is so pretty, I couldn't help but use it. Um, and I think if I stored it upside down, it might help some because the ink is still there. It's just at the bottom. Um, anyway, so I'm just getting it all linked up and ready to go. And then right now you're going to see me be all paranoid again about trying to get things lined up. I'm always moving my paper around and trying to get there. So it's like, Stamp Kelly, come on, you can do it. Um, so <laughs> there I go again. Um, and you know, I'm using, you know, right, you see that paper behind there has got some grid lines. I, tr I try to use that some too um, to stamp with. And so there I go. I'm pushing down a little extra hard because it is a silhouette or solid image stamp. And I think that kind of helps make sure that you get the even coverage, like a background stamp kind of idea. Um, and so there's my little panel. So the next thing we're going to do is create a mask. So this is just some scrap computer paper that I had um, sitting around. And I just grabbed the closest ink pad because it doesn't matter what color you're going to stamp in or how well you stamp it. Um, you just need to get the general image so you can cut it out. So you're going to see right now, um, I'm going to stamp this extremely poorly. Um, <laughs> and uh, and then we're going to go about uh, cutting it out of this really thin, this is like the cheap Costco paper, um, which actually works really well. Like the cheaper the computer paper, the better. The really thin stuff is what I like to use for masking. So um, thanks, Costco. Um, anyways, I'm going to cut it out now. And I'm using these cutter bee scissors that I really like for this sort of fussy cutting. And uh, I'm going to fast forward a little bit because nobody wants to see me try to cut this thing for an hour. Um, and so right now I'm just cutting uh, the little handle there at the end um, and just, just trying to get it as close as possible. The masking doesn't have to be perfect for what, what I'm going to do in this card. Um, other times it, you may need a perfect mask, but um, I try to avoid needing anything to be perfect <laughs> um, when it comes to paper crafting because I always make mistakes and I think that sometimes that makes it charming. So um, I'm just putting some removable adhesive on the back of my mask that I just made and then putting it on um, this panel that we stamped the sunflower colored umbrella on and just making sure that it all lines up. And then right now I've got Antique Linen Distress Ink out. I love this, it's definitely my favorite distress ink. And it's a really subtle color. Um, so I'm gonna use this color with um, Paper Trinks Background Basics Textile Stamp, um, which is also another favorite of mine um, that I like using for kind of subtle backgrounds. So I'm gonna stamp this um, text, and now you're gonna see my frizzy, frizzy hair. And unfortunately, my frizzy hair makes an appearance way too often. I think I saw gray hairs on the top of my head, which nobody needs to see. Um, but there it goes again, because I didn't realize with my camera set up that my head was in the way. And I can't seem to stamp without leaning over. But anyways, I'm taking off that mask now. Um, and then you can see that there's a yellow umbrella with text all around it, but the yellow umbrella has remained intact. So I think it's a really fun look. Um, but we're going to go on and do some more masking. So right now I'm stamping the umbrella poorly again. Um, and uh, this time I'm going to stamp it so that uh, we're going to do raindrops. And I don't want the raindrops to be underneath the umbrella. So how I'm going to do that is using a T-square ruler um, and drawing a line with a pencil down the sides of the umbrella. Um, I love this T-square ruler. I got it at Office Depot for like a couple dollars. It's so worth it. Um, especially for me who can never get anything straight, it makes sure that I get everything straight. <laughs> so um, there we go. I'm just drawing the lines and then I'm going to cut it out just like I did the other umbrella but this time going along the lines and then the top of the umbrella as opposed to cutting out the, the whole thing. And uh, and so it's kind of going to be another another layer that we're going to add on of masking. So I'm going to probably going to be fast forwarding the cutting here because it's a little boring as usual to see me cut since it takes me a while. 
Um, so let's fast forward. Okay, um, fast time. And there we go. Um, I've got my mask now. And I'm just kind of trying to clean it up a little bit. But like I said, this doesn't have to be perfect um, for this technique because, you know, rain doesn't rain can sometimes hit you under the umbrella. So that's my excuse. Um, so I'm just putting the removal adhesive. This is from Tombow. I really like this one. Um, and uh, I've had it for a really long time and I never really have run out because I don't use it too often. So um, I like it. And right now I'm just going to lean over and you guys get to see frizzy hair again. And uh, oh my goodness, that frizzy hair. That's awful. Okay, I'm trying to line up my mask again, and uh, and and so we can go ahead and stamp the raindrops. So let's keep going from here. Now the mask is all settled, and we're ready to stamp some rain. So there's the raindrops from Partly Cloudy, and what I'm going to do is lay them down on the paper, and then line them up with the the grids on this grid block um, acrylic block. And I think it's easier to, to stamp a continuous pattern that way at least for me because then I can look at the grid lines and make sure that I'm getting everything even although I like with the idea of rain that if it's not perfectly even it's okay because it's raindrops um, but I'm just gonna start stamping it and uh, and I'm just gonna fast forward uh, as I create the pattern all over this umbrella and I don't have to worry if I stamp over the umbrella because the mask is there so right now I'm doing um, what should be the final stamp but then you're gonna see me stamp one more time which I think is hilarious that I stamped a complete one on the mask completely forgetting what I was doing in the first place. So there's a completely useless stamp for you. Um, and then I'm realizing that I just wasted my time. Um, <laughs> but now I'm removing the mask and you're going to see that now the text background's there, but the raindrops are falling all around the umbrella, which I really like how that turned out. So I trimmed down the piece just because I thought it would look nicer on the card that way. Um, and then uh, I'm getting out just my Type 2 from L'Enfant also. And uh, I'm using the Thank You. And I like that the Thank and You are separate because in this case I want them to be stacked on top of each other versus in a line for this. So you can do either way with this stamp. So I like lining it up on, the, on like a scratch paper first and then picking it up with the acrylic block. Um, I think that's that can be sometimes it's easy. It's not always, but in this case, I think it was. So this is some berry sorbet ink from Paper Train. Ink. It's such a pretty color. I really really like it. Um, and I wanted just kind of a pop of pink in there. So because um, pink is fun. So there it goes. Stamping. Thank you. Um, and then right now I'm just going to uh, use some distressing the antique linen color all around the edges. I thought it looked a little plain. I just wanted to make sure that it would pop off the card. So I'm not really distress distressing. I'm just kind of giving it a little border. Um, and, and that really works. So even if you like do more clean and simple and stuff like I do, um, the distress with the foam pad thing is so cool. I, I love it. So right now I'm lining, uh, you know, adhering my little panel onto some girls' papery paper. The, the girls' papery stuff is so pretty, um, and it's this patchworky paper, and I think that might be the name. But on my blog, I'll have all the the products that I used in the video um, written out. But there's uh, there's my panel, and now it's ready to go on my card. Uh, but I want to add something else to it. I want to add some ribbon. So what I am taking out is score tape, which I just got, which I love. Um, and just lining it up um, to put my ribbon down. The cool thing about this tape is you can actually, it's really strong hold, but you can rip it like a masking tape. But the funny thing is I completely forgot, and I, you're going to see me cut it. Um, but I'll remember one day. And then I just wrap the tape around the card. And then right now I'm putting the ribbon around the card. And of course I taped my card to my paper, because I do that I think every single time. But I do that, one, because I'm cheap and I don't like to waste my ribbon. And two, because it, it's less bulk in a card if you want to mail it to somebody. So right now I'm putting foam adhesive, which has completely obliterated the reason for having no bulk in the first place. So I guess I'm just cheap ribbon person. <laughs> I don't like, I like to save all my ribbon. And I'm just trying to line up right now with a panel, as usual, paranoid stamping there. And I'm putting it a little bit lower on the card, just for a different look. And, uh, and then I'm going to have uh, these gems on. And uh, these are from Prima. And I'm going to add them on. And then we're going to have a final image of the card. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye.